Today we'll cover dynamic longitudinal stability data reduction. As always, make sure you calculate your weight and center of gravity before you take off. In-flight data for this lab includes time from a stopwatch and airspeed from the second or third row airspeed indicator. The rest of the data is really optional, but you can record it off the tablet, the outside air temperature gauge, and the co-pilot engine instruments. Step one is to tabulate your indicated airspeed data. You should have done two Fugoi demonstrations, one in the climb configuration and one in the power approach configuration. And depending whether you took data every five seconds, 10 seconds, or used your phone to record video, which is what we did for this data shown here, and then went back and played the video and recorded the data every two seconds, either way, you'll have a table of data of time versus indicated airspeed. Step two is to plot the indicated airspeed versus time. This example shows the data plotted for the climb configuration. Step three is to determine the period, the time from peak to peak, and then the various amplitudes. As you can see for this data, the period is about 28 seconds, and then the sine wave seems to center about 115 on the indicated airspeed, so we've done the amplitudes x1, x2, x3, and x4. Step four is to determine the damping ratio using this damping ratio chart on the left, where you input half cycle amplitude ratio on the x-axis and then read the corresponding damping factor on the y-axis. The half cycle amplitude ratio is any x over the next x. And so I showed three different versions based on the x1, x2, 3, and 4 from the graph above to show you that you can ratio any two of these and you should get approximately the same value. And in this case, the ratios are all about 1.2. So then take 1.2 and go to the half cycle amplitude chart and then find the corresponding damping ratio which is 0 0.08. Step five is to determine the damp frequency omega D and the natural frequency omega N. The damp frequency omega D is just two pi over the period. For this example, it's two pi over 28 or 0 0.224 radians per second. Natural frequency, or omega n, is calculated using the damp frequency of 0 0.224 and then divided by the square root of 1 minus the damping ratio from the previous slide of 0 0.08 squared. In this case, the natural frequency is 0 0.225. The natural frequency will always be greater than the damp frequency. Step six is to tabulate data from the data acquisition system or the orange box. This should have been given to you in spreadsheet form as shown here. Step seven is to select columns to plot. To get a fugoid mode, you can look at either pitch, height, down velocity, or NZ. Either of those parameters will give you a sinusoidal output to calculate the damping ratio and natural frequency. Step eight is to generate those plots. You can see here's the four plots of pitch attitude, GPS altitude, down velocity, and NZ. As you can see, all of these produce a sinusoid where you could pull off a period and some amplitudes to calculate the damping ratios and natural frequency. Step nine is to determine the period and amplitudes off of really any of the plots. However, as you can see, it's easier to get amplitudes off the two plots on the right, which are symmetric about a horizontal plane. 
case of down velocity, five miles per hour seems to be the center. In a case of NZ, one G seems to be the center of the sinusoid. You could get amplitudes about pitch attitude and GPS altitude. It's just not gonna be a horizontal line. You're gonna have to draw an angled line and then get the amplitudes off of that. But period is pretty readily available on, on any of the four plots and it's pretty close uh, within plus or minus a second, but 26.2, 26.8 seems to be pretty good value for the period. Step 10 is to determine the damping ratio. Again, we use the half cycle amplitude plot on the left. We just need to get two consecutive X's. And uh, you can see here, depending on which graph you use, you could get 1.17, or in the case of NZ, which is a little bit more scattered data, and you're using smaller numbers, so when you ratio them, it's a little less accurate. So I would use the down velocity to get my X1 to X2 ratio, and, and for this example, it's, it's still about 1.2. So our damping ratio is 0 0.08. Step 11, determine the damp frequency and natural frequency using the same equations as we used before, where the damp frequency is two pi over the period. In this case, we use 26.2 seconds for a damp frequency of 0 0.240 radians per second. Natural frequency is calculated using the damp frequency and the damping ratio from the previous slide using the equation shown. And for this example, the natural frequency comes out to 0 0.241. And again, it's always gonna be slightly bigger or bigger than the damp frequency omega D.